Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. I saw it written and I saw it say, Pink Moon is on the way. Jim Hutchinson with a New Jersey, Delaware Bay edition of the Fisherman Magazine. Those are the opening lines to one of my favorite all-time songs, a guy, Nick Drake. Song is Pink Moon, it was out in the 70s. I highly recommend you look that up. But Pink Moon is the name of the full moon in April, which is coming up in just a few days. And the pink in that pink moon comes from uh, the wild blooming flowers, specifically the wild ground flocks, sometimes blanketing the ground in spring. This is a few of the flowers of my home block in Northern Ocean County. Makes you think of that spring bloom. Of course, things are blooming down here in my old hometown, where I really call home, 19, 18 mile long Barrier Island, Long Beach Island. I'm here at Jingles in Beach Haven, one of the three shops here on Long Beach Island. But if you haven't been to Jingles in a while, I highly recommend it. Uh, Steve and Carol Ann Palmer, they bought the shop. This is their fifth summer coming up now. Bought it from uh, Margaret and of course uh, the original Jingles O'Brien many years ago. But they have taken this shop, they've doubled the size, doubled the inventory. Uh, I mean, you're gonna find a heck of a lot more stuff when you come in here. It's a lot brighter, a lot more open. You've got the extra tough boots in here, Carol Ann tells me. They're gonna get a whole bunch of offshore stuff this season. Uh, the Smith sunglasses, the Wiley X, and of course, everything you need to gear up right now, especially with the LBI Spring Derby. Bass and Blues going on right now. Carol Ann said they've got the blood worms. They're getting surf clams on a regular basis. So you definitely wanna stop in here gear up for that striper derby, that spring striper and bluefish derby, um, but also things are really starting to pop at this point. April 26th, that's the pink moon. The sprouting grass moon is what they call it as well, the egg moon for some of us. It's also called the fish moon for good, for good reason. But the pink moon also means it's time for the pink zooms. These are the saltwater assassins, but of course a lot of folks like the Lunker City, the finesse. Dosed and a liberal supply of the finesse and shedder oil. We talk about it all the time, and there's good reason, too. Frank Rosinski is a fisherman contributor. Uh, he has a Facebook page called The Wonderful World of Weak Fish. You should go find it on Facebook, because as these weak fish catches start coming in, he shares them all the time. And Frank himself doses those pink zooms with the finescence, got into it on April 18th, got his first weak fish of the 2021 season. Not one of those tide runners, but again, think pink. As that moon starts in the next couple of days, I think more fish are going to be on the moon, uh, on the moon uh, racing with the tide, and I would expect some of those tide runners as well. Um, thinking back in terms of tide runners, don't forget the state record weak fish, 18 and a half pounds. That was Delaware Bay, 1986 for Carl Jones. Would love to see that weak fish population come back. Could be any time now. It's a natural mortality. Uh, impact, but again, if you're into weak fish, this is definitely the time as we move in the next week or so and into May. For those wondering when the summer flounder will, will arrive, wonder no more. This also comes from Frank Rosinski, dropping that pink, pink uh, zoom on the bottom, and like I said, the finesse work as well, but he got his first summer flounder in that same trip. April 18th. A lot of folks assume that fluke don't arrive until sometime late May. Well, that's only because the charmers at NOAA Fisheries have put us into this box almost that it's just Memorial Day to Labor Day. But again, those summer flounder are coming in, especially Southern Ocean County, Atlantic, Cape May County. Summer flounder is open now in Delaware waters, but I expect more of those fish to be coming as bycatch as they get up on those flats uh, in the coming days. And I would remind you too, when we're looking at reports for last year at this time, the first fluke reports that we had in the Shark River area came in time for our May edition. So definitely those flatties are on the move and getting back in there. Uh, there are also some black drum in the mix in uh, Delaware Bay at this point. Uh, Sandra and Nick Roof from Dover, Delaware posed with this eater sized black drum they caught off of Broad Kill Beach, checked in with the folks at uh, Lewis Harbor Marina. They've said that that was on Sand Crab. We've been getting similar reports from some of the other tackle shops down along that broad kill beach stretch. Uh, some stripers in the mix with the black drum, and we're waiting for those trout to arrive there as well. Uh, as you start gearing up for the black drum season, don't forget about the black drum battle. Blackdrumbattle.com. 
because we have that free entry into that tournament that kicks off on May 1st. Go in, email us, or, or sign up at theblackdrumbattle.com. I'll get your email if you're a subscriber to the Fisherman Magazine. You're already on board. And if you catch the biggest black drum in the black drum battle, you'll actually get some cash as well. Staying down there in Delaware for just a moment, there are some short stripers along that stretch, uh, as well as some bluefish at Indian River Inlet. Found that out this, this, uh, this past week. Uh, by the way, I mentioned last week about the first black drum that was caught just across the way, across the inlet, across two inlets if you count Rec Inlet, over there at Andy's place, a Riptide Bait and Tackle. But while Chris L. was knocked out of that first black drum place, knew it was going to happen. And I expect some more fish coming in as well. But it didn't take very long for Luke Callahan to bang on this 17 pound drum, take the drum lead in that Riptide um, Spring Derby. Again, that was a Riptide Rotter. Not only the good, the, the only good fish around as well, and I, I believe Stephen and Carol Ann were following on this last week as well. A good striped bass was weighed in along the beach uh, for Hunter Peck there in Brigantine, also on clam, 41 inch striper. So maybe more of these big fish are moving up uh, from the south and along these beaches. Haven't gotten much in terms of the Cape May County bite, but for sure this bite is starting, it's gotta start to intensify at some point. Uh, for our paid subscribers to the Fisherman Magazine, our members only, you saw the big striper from the Delaware River on this week's digital edition cover. Uh, well, we also noted on that cover from doing the reports this week that weak fish are reported at AC and Avalon. Noel at One Stop Bait and Tackle in Atlantic City uh, and some friends of mine also reported a good uh, bunch of stripers, mostly shorts, but some really good striper fishing from the jetties there as well. So again, we've got those stripers on the move. Front side beaches uh, on the Jersey Shore starting to come alive a little bit farther into Northern Ocean County and hopefully into Monmouth County as well. Some micro fish for the most part. Guys are out there with small plastics, those small kettle creeks, uh, some plugs as well. But this week we found out from the folks at Betty and Nick's that Chris Van Dunk had a 34 inchery nailed at Island Beach State Park on clam. So it's good to see some more bigger fish showing up in the Island Beach and uh, 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 that stretch up into my other home up there in Northern Ocean County as well. Meanwhile, Ed Plichta was coming back in from Toggin uh, over the weekend, came in Barnegat Inlet on the way home. He encountered a Barnegat Bay Blitz, birds and bass blowing up on bait. He said he released over 50 stripers tagged half of them and even managed to keep her in there in the mix as well. So be on the lookout. We have talked about that Tom's River bite uh, from early March. Well, those bass, I would guess, are kind of spread out throughout the bay. Same thing down this way and even into Cape May County waters as well. Keep an eye out on the water. Um, always keep an eye out because there's going to be some more of these, uh, maybe some more of these bass blitzes in back. The big stripers on Raritan Bay, seems like a lot of them have scattered at this point. I'm sure a lot of the jumbos, especially as we go into this April 26th full moon, are going to start moving up the Hudson to do their spawning thing but we can expect more fish to arrive in the Raritan as well in the coming days, weeks, uh, and even in, into the months. Uh, Jim Frieda at Shore Catch uh, Sport Fishing, he did let me know that the top water bite continues to be pretty strong in the back of Raritan Bay. He had Matt Feeney out with a nice one on a Mad Mantis spook. Uh, just the other day. Meanwhile, on that Delaware River bite, that continues as well. Uh, some more of those big fish are moving farther upriver. Uh, think, I guess, the Trenton and Lambertville area. But Ryan Fogarty of National Park said he watches our weekly video all the time. Uh, he finally tried that blood, ba blood bag that we've been talking about for, for weeks. Uh, he caught a 38-incher right quick on that blood bag. Truth be told, I didn't come up with the blood bag. The first time I'd heard about it was caster, uh, a Delaware River surf caster, um, uh, Chris Orange, who let me know. But I'm glad that we can all share a little bit of this tactical knowledge together every once in a while. I also heard from 18-year-old Trevor Shorter on Tuesday. He said he's always gone fishing with his dad uh, on the Delaware River uh, in the Pens Grove area. Trevor said he took all those years of learning the water while fishing with dad, experience from fishing, put it to the test on, Monsta on Monday caught and released a monster. Is that a beautiful fish or what? 46 inches, a nice big fat egg laden cow that Trevor caught and released, one of his personal best so far. So again, those spawning stripers are heading up the river uh, and hopefully, I keep my fingers crossed all the time, that this will be a good recruitment year for the Chesapeake, the Delaware, and also the Hudson. 
But again, those fish are moving up the rivers, all those rivers, the Chesapeake, the Delaware, and the Hudson, uh, to drop those eggs. Uh, if you want to know more about striped bass, Rutgers University, uh, the Cooperative Extension, they're hosting an online event on Monday through its Marine Extension program. These are great seminars. This series specifically, the one on Monday, is all about striped bass management. I really, I highly recommend these programs from, uh, from Rutgers and their Cooperative Extension. You have until this Friday at three o'clock to register for that event though. Um, you can see all the information on the screen. If you don't see it, email me. I'll give you the information. You can email me jhutchinson at thefisherman.com. Highly recommend these Rutgers programs. And again, this one on Monday is all about striped bass. The other run that's going on up the Delaware right now is that shad run. Um, and there's some good fish in the mix at this point. Dennis, uh, Denise Leonard sent this photo of a seven pound rose shad released by Alan Krupa of Crosswicks after it hit a flutter spoon. I'll tell you, a shad that big will do some damage in that bi-state shad tournaments going on right now. But I am getting word uh, from a lot of people that the shad run right now has some big fish. In fact, that's what George uh, has to say this week as we go into our Pocono Outdoors report. Well, hey, thanks, Jim. You know, lots of great stuff is happening. Early spring is probably one of the best times to go fishing, except for late fall. And there's just so much going on. You know, we have the trout season going on right now. Lots of great things to do, especially if you want to take those kids out and get on a few trout. Great way to get them into the sport. We got the pre-spawn bass season well in full swing. A lot of great fish being caught there. But we also got another fishery coming into play. I got a few check-ins this week uh, from our own Josh Taylor. He checked in. He says the crappie bite is on fire. Those things are probably spawning right now, so be sure you get those big cows released. But some beautiful fish here from Josh. He was up at Machunk Lake uh, throwing those little Kytex, you know, those little paddle tails are just getting the job done. So great work on the crappie fishing. Also, Eric Goodstall was on the same thing. He said the crappie bite is on fire. Now, uh, Eric ties his own little little marabou jigs, but the jig bite is definitely getting it done with, the, with these crappie. Now, one of the things I did want to talk about is, uh, you know, we, we've been talking about the shad, and the shad season is well under Way. Matter of fact, this week we start that big tournament, um, the, the Bi-State Annual Tournament. So that is underway. Lots of great fishing. And, and, and we hear that these are some of the biggest fish that people have seen in years. Some really great catches there. But one thing we really didn't talk about was the striper bite on the Delaware. Now I checked in with, uh, with, with Trey Costi over at Brinkman's Bait and Tackle down there in Northeast uh, Philadelphia. And he says the striper bite is really on. He says they're finally getting some fish north of the Commodore Barry Bridge. And they had a couple fish in excess of 50 pounds in the river. Can you believe that? 50 pounds, not a bad day on the river. But they've had several dozen reported in that 30 to 40 pound range. Now, what are they chewing on? bloodworms, of course. Now, now there's, Trey says he is getting in regular shipments of bloodworms. He's also getting in the, the bunker and the clam because they're starting to chew on meat as well. So lots of great striper fishing in the Delaware, guys. Get in on that. And, and don't forget, too, a bonus tip. Uh, Trey says that there's a really good catfish bite going on now, too, as well. So lots of great fishing, guys. I hope you're out enjoying it. From Pennsylvania, I'm George, your Pocono Outdoors guy. On that freshwater scene, I've got a tournament for you down in South Jersey. Ed Guth let me know about this event. It's May 2nd at Mary Elmer Lake in Bridgeton. It's the 39th annual Bob, Bob Bisnardo Kids Fishing Derby. That's open to kids from five to 13 years of age. They've got $500 in prizes they're giving away. It's a great event. If you're down in South Jersey looking for an event, that's on May 2nd. If you want some information on that, you can call 856-453-2184. Another bunker update for you this week. I'm still seeing social media posts Every time I see an article that we post about the bunker die off, people say it's oxygen, oxygen deprivation. No, not this time around, not according to the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection. It's not the normal situation this time, folks. It has to do with a vibrial bacterial infection in these bunker. Uh, the state and regional fisheries experts are working together to try to figure out um, just why exactly this is happening. And I'll tell you, after 14 months or so of, of COVID-19 updates through the CDC website, you probably don't want me to bring this up, 
But a friend did let me know that at the CDC website, they've got some really good material on Vibrio, this bacteria. Certain, uh, certainly not something you wanna get into your system if you have open wounds. So again, I'm gonna defer to what the state DEP says. If you're finding these dead and dying bunker, try not to handle them. Certainly don't wanna be dealing with any type of Vibrio infection. Don't forget about the saltwater registry. If you're fishing in the saltwater in New Jersey, you gotta register. If you don't and you get caught, that's a fine. Why do it when it's absolutely free? We need that information to get better data, better accounting for state anglers. So hopefully everybody listening, watching this video has already signed up. You can do so by going to saltwaterregistry.nj.gov. Make sure you register. We're going to print with a May edition uh, this Sunday. Got a busy weekend gathering reports from North Central South Jersey, down to Delaware Bay, the Chesapeake out in uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, I'm gonna be down a field editor this week, J.B. Casper. Uh, he was out catching some jumbo stripers. He said the big stripers had finally arrived at his stretch up around the, I guess the Lambertville area, and uh, his ticker called him into the hospital. J uh, J.B., I'm gonna try to replace you best I can. I'm gonna make the calls myself, but hurry up, get better, fix that ticker of yours and get back to helping me out. Make sure you're subscribing to our latest YouTube uh, uh, subscription. You subscribe to YouTube, that way every time we come up with a new video, you get the little alert, you don't miss anything. Uh, I hope to do a bunch more on water video uh, components this year. Once the boat's splashed, once I get out and get away from the office long enough, but you gotta subscribe to the YouTube account Get those subscriptions so you know what's going on. Um, the paid membership, of course, in the Fisherman Magazine is important. I talked about weak fish. Talked about we're getting into that prime time for throwing those plastics at jumbo weak fish. Well, weak fish is the fish of the month in our Dreamboat Fishing Challenge starting May 1st. You gotta be a paid member of the Fisherman Magazine to get in on that tournament. Uh, you can go to thefisherman.com, look up the, uh, the, black, the, the Dreamboat Fishing Challenge, Get your subscription all up to date. You don't have to be a subscriber to get into that black drum battle. It helps because you can get a cash prize too if you get the biggest black drum, but don't forget to go over to blackdrumbattle.com as well. Hey, remember a few weeks ago, I talked about that big freshwater striped bass record for uh, John Christian. That was a 51 pounder. It was on the Great Egg Harbor River. It was a long time ago. It was April 26th, 2002, 2002. Well, you know when the full moon was that season? It was on April 27th, so the day before. Those fish are moving, and they're gonna be moving on this next moon. Make sure you're there when they arrive. Catch them up this week. We'll check in with you again next week and find out more about some of the, jet, the action along the Jersey Shore and Delaware coast. We come back to you right here at thefisherman.com. Steigercraft boats, built by people who fish our waters. Serious English choose Steigercraft for their 40 years of boat building experience right here in the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic. Visit Steigercraft.com for a dealer near you.